Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. Welcome to Fushion Mobile e-learning clinic. My name is Sonia Lalo and I'll be walking you through the chemistry course. In this particular lesson, we'll be considering, the, um, considering carbon and its compound. Carbon and its compound. We'll be discussing the halotropes of carbon, the general properties of carbon. We'll look at carbon fox, um, carbon four oxide, yes, then we'll consider carbon two oxide, which is also known as carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. Then we'll look at the trioxocarbonate fours and then the hydrogen trioxocarbonate four and conclude the lesson with the carbon cycle. Alright, let's go and talk about carbon. So when we talk about carbon, what comes to mind? Carbon is one of the elements uh, that we'll find in the periodic table. It's one of the first 20 elements. It goes with the symbol C. It's a group four element. It's a group four element. It has um, six protons in its nucleus. That is, the, ma and the atomic number is six. And the mass number of 12 is what it possesses. It has a mass number of 12, atomic number of 6, and it is a group 4 element. So it means the electronic configuration of carbon is 2,4, which accounts for the 6 electrons which um, it should have in its natural state. Since it has 4 electrons in its outermost shell, the outermost shell is supposed to accommodate 8 electrons. So that's something like um, the nucleus is here first shell and then the other one so it tends to act sometimes like um, a metal sometimes like a non-metal it reacts with both metals and non-metals and we do call them we do describe with four elements as metalloids because they possess some of the properties of metals as well as properties of non-metals but carbon because of its state it almost never releases electrons it almost never gives away its electrons rather it will it will bond in a covalent bond if it cannot receive it can if it cannot accept and and become as an act as a, a non-metal it would rather share electrons with other compounds other substances around it so we have carbon, a metalloid, which acts more as a non-metal than as, uh, as a metal. Then we'll talk about the allotropes of carbon. The allotropes of carbon. When we talk about the allotropes of carbon, what do we mean? Carbon exists in two major forms in nature. The first one is what is described as the diamond. The other is called graphite. Well, when I said diamond, I mean that very diamond you're thinking about. C colorless, uh, most times colorless, shiny, glass-like structure. Very hard. In fact, the diamond has been described as the hardest substance on earth. Yes, that is carbon. So carbon can be in the diamond form. And in the diamond form of carbon, what do we see? We see a crystalline substance, a particular material that exists in a crystalline state. So the diamond has an octahedral st structure. The octahedral structure. Um, the diamond is known as the hardest substance ever. All right, let's talk about the graphite and the diamond structures. In the graphite, in the diamond rather, we have the octahedral structure. That is um, this eight-sided shape which has um uh, if you look at it you have one two three four on the side and if you spin the diamond around you see the other four faces well the graphite of course the graphite has um an hexagonal shape the the diamond is a 3d is a 3d solid the graphite is actually a 2d solid which actually are laid in layers over each other the graphite has been held together by a very strong bond of its own but the graphite each of them is bound together in 2d 
and then the two Ds are now being stacked and compressed together, combining, the, um, merging together by the power of Van der Waals forces. That's a bonding agent between them. And we discussed Van der Waals forces in the previous lesson that Van der Waals forces is one of the weakest of all the bonds, of all the chemical bonds. So there's a very weak bond within the graphite, which makes it soft. The graphite is very soft, but the diamond is hard, in fact. The diamond is described as the hardest substance in the world. The diamond is used for cutting many different things. It is used as a cutting tool agent. It is attached to metals and used for cutting glass, cutting uh, other substances. But graphite, graphite is fine. Graphite in the lead of our pencils used for marking, scribbling. Yes, graphite are, is a black in color. It is dark. It is opaque. It is dark. Why? Um, Diamond is crystalline, is, is um, transparent. It has a crystalline structure while the graphite has a lattice structure. And graphite has a density of 2.3 grams per cm cube while diamond has a density of 3.5 grams per cm cube. Uh, before we leave graphite and uh, the allotropes of carbon, let's quickly talk about um, the amorphous carbon. The amorphous carbon is the third form of carbon. It does not have a unique shape, um, shape or it does not have unique features. It is um, irregular, just as the word amorphous suggests. It is irregular. It takes up almost any form. We see it in form of soot, in form of charcoal, in form of um, um, animal ash, wood ash, just mentioned but few. So the amorphous carbon is irregular in shape. It has absolutely no shape no regular pattern is just there uh -huh. before we leave this um diamond is a very very bad conductor of both heat and electricity while graphite is a very good conductor of its electricity graphite partake in chemical reactions and diamond almost do not take part in any chemical reactions but if you burn graphite if one diamond at about 900 degrees celsius you will be able to get your carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide as it is called. And if you burn gra um, graphite, you will need to burn it at only about 700 degrees Celsius and you can get the same result. All right, before we go into looking at the general properties of carbon, let's take a short break to test what we have learned so far in this lesson. Welcome back. Let's discuss the general properties of carbon. Well, carbon can partake in many reactions, many kinds of reactions, but majorly the kind of reactions that we see carbon partake in are combination reaction. It acts as a reducing agent. It reacts with strong oxidizing agents. And of course, you can distill um, certain carbon. So let's look at one of them. Let's take them one after the other. Combination reaction. Combination reaction simply talk about you taking carbon and combining it with another substance. For adventure, you burn carbon in air and you produce oxygen, um, carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide, depending on the quantity of air which was um, the, the carbon was burnt in its presence. So we have carbon being burnt in the presence of um, carbon mixed with um, that. Um, sulfur and we have carbon four sulfide sulfate we have also carbon being burnt in the presence of hydrogen to produce the methane gas we, in terms of beets being a reducing agent the carbon has the possibility as the ability to act like an hydrogen or to absorb oxygen or um, non-metals from metals so when carbon reacts in the presence of um, when they react um, carbon, excess carbon with um, iron 3 oxide, you get your iron purified, pure iron, and you have three molecules of the carbon monoxide gas, that is carbon 2 oxide gas. Of course, when you react your carbon with carbon 4 oxide, that is burning carbon in, um, burning carbon in limited air, you have two molecules of carbon 2 oxide coming out of the expression. Also, in like manner, when you, are, when you react carbon with very strong oxidizing agents, such as um, trioxonitrate 5 acids, your end result is production of wa water, nitrogen, um, nitrogen 4 oxide, and carbon 4 oxide gas. Of course, 
the distillation of carbon when you distill um, the components different components containing which are carbon in nature that is um, probably you take coal to start with you always have several different produce and this distillation is usually irreversible it is a destructive distillation then we will eat coal out of coal you get coke and you get ammonia car liquor then you get your coal tar and your coal gas to do whatever thing you want to use it for the same thing happens to wood when you burn your wood you have your wood charcoal your pyroligneous acid uh, wood tar and the wood gas coming out of it so this is when we do the destructive um, combustion that is the destructive distillation of carbon compounds that is either coal coke even your petroleum produce though your petroleum produce is not pure carbon they are hydrocarbons let's discuss the carbon dioxide carbon dioxide often called carbon dioxide by most people is a particular unique gas it is colorless it is odorless it is tasteless but it has a, a lot of effects on mankind it is what of the, it is the gas that is responsible for the production of food through the photosynthetic process in plants. Uh, carbon dioxide can be produced in the laboratory by reacting uh, trioxocarbonate with an acid. And trioxocarbonate reacts with an acid. Uh, carbon monoxide gas and um, carbon dioxide gas rather would be liberated. For example, maybe you take calcium trioxocarbonate four, and you react it with maybe probably. Um, hydrochloric acid, HCl, the end result would be calcium chloride, that will require two molecules of course, calcium chloride plus water plus carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide gas. So the short way, easy ways to produce it is simply by reacting your um, calcium carbonate or your carbonate, your trioxocarbonates with any dilute acid or any acid depending on the nature of the acid. So what are the uses? What, what are the properties of um, the properties of carbon dioxide? Properties of carbon dioxide as earlier stated, it is denser than, it is about 1.5 times denser than air it is heavier than air, about 1.5 times. It is about 1.5 times denser than air. It is odorless, it is colorless, it is tasteless, but it gives a refreshing, a refreshing feeling when consumed. Yeah, that's what we experience when you take our Pepsi, our Coca-Cola, our cola drinks, our bottle drinks. It is carbonated water. So carbon dioxide has been added, uh, carbon dioxide has been added to that water. And it gives us this refreshing feeling. So, apart from the refreshing feeling which it gives, when um, a damp litmus is taken close to uh, a, the, the, this thing, the carbon, carbon dioxide gas, a damp litmus paper would turn pink. Well, it would try to turn red. Well, it would turn pink because it is acidic in nature. It is acidic in nature. So, these are some of the physical properties of the carbon dioxide. What about the chemical properties of carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide partake in a couple of chemical reactions, some of which includes the burning of carbon dioxide in the presence of um, burning of um, rather the burning of um, carbon in the presence of carbon dioxide. That is, carbon in limited air, solid carbon. It will result in the production of carbon monoxide. It is also used in the production of water gas and um, is in the production of producer gas. It is used in the production of producer gas. It is used in the production of producer gas. Of course, um, carbon dioxide, that's carbon dioxide, it can react with water. And when it does react with water, it produces what we know as a trioxocarbonate 4 acid. The trioxocarbonate 4 acid is produced. Um, 
also it reacts with magnesium it reacts with it, it serves as an iron uh, also as an uh, and and a reducing agent it helps to reduce certain substances in nature so how do we test for the presence of carbon dioxide? testing for the presence of carbon dioxide is quite easy what do you do you react you pass the carbon dioxide you pass the suspected gas through lime water pass the suspected gas through lime water that's quick um, lime water yes that lime water is calcium hydroxide so when you pass your co2 through it it produces when you pass your carbon dioxide through that's carbon dioxide when you pass it through your um, calcium hydroxide your carbon dioxide through the calcium hydroxide it produces carbon um, ca um, calcium trioxide carbonate 4 and water um, this particular calcium trioxide carbonate 4 happens to be insoluble in water so it gives a milky a milky coloration it simply precipitates uh, it, it crystallizes out the calcium carbonate calcium trials carbonate so we have the peripsides in the water in, in the water and it sounds as crystals it stand as crystals inside our water so it makes it brings about this um, milky coloration the liquid this particular substance is colorless of course the gas is colorless when it enters into it it becomes milky in appearance so that's how we test for the presence of carbon dioxide let's quickly talk about carbon for um, carbon two oxide we've talked about we've spoken about carbon four oxide let's quickly consider carbon two oxide carbon four um, carbon two oxide can be produced by passing carbon dioxide that's carbon four oxide over red hot coal or red hot cop, um, uh, source of carbon and well, what will come out of it will be carbon two oxide so what are the physical properties? What are the properties of carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide is also a colorless gas, but it is choky in nature. It is choky in nature. It's a colorless choking gas because why does it choke? It absorbs oxygen from every opportunity. It has a smell. It has a choking smell. All right. It serves as a reducing agent. Some of the chemical properties, it serves as a reducing agent. If you see in these particular experiments that we have here, lead oxide reacting with carbon to oxide will give us the solid lead, the purified lead, plus carbon dioxide. So it, it, it serves as a reducing agent, removing oxygen from systems or uh, from substances. Also, it partakes in um, combination reactions. It partakes in combination reactions, especially when it revolves oxygen. Of course, when we have two um, CO reacting with oxygen, it will produce to, uh, for us CO2 gas. So these are the major kinds of reactions that um, the carbon monoxide engages in. Um, I've spoken about this. So what are the uses? What do we use carbon monoxide for? Carbon monoxide is very useful in terms of preparation of fuels different fuels. Uh, one of the such fuels is the producer gas, the water gas. Carbon monoxide is often needed for the generation of these kinds of fuels. Let's quickly take a look at trioxocarbonates. Trioxocarbonates. So when we talk about trioxocarbonates, what do we refer to? Trioxocarbonates generally have the structure um, C23-2. C23 minus 2, and this is the indicator of a trioxocarbonate. So we have many of them. We have sodium trioxocarbonate, we have calcium trioxocarbonate, we have potassium trioxocarbonate. How are trioxocarbonates being formed? Trioxocarbonates have been formed when you react a base with the um, when you react a base with the carbon dioxide gas that's in carbon four oxide. So probably you have um, um, potassium hydroxide. That's two of it, and you react it with carbon dioxide what would be out the output would be potassium trioxocarbonate plus water the same thing will happen if you use sodium if you use calcium if you use magnesium let's see something involving magnesium magnesium 
plus CO2 will give us magnesium trioxycarbonate plus water. So that's how the expression go. So what are the um, the chemical reactions? What are the properties of these particular substances? The thing about them is that most of them are insoluble in water. Most of these salts are insoluble. They solidify, they are solid salts. So when you put them in water, they do not mix with water. Uh, especially the calcium form of it. Uh, then yes, of, as well. These trials of carbonates are also responsible for the hardness of water, especially this particular magnesium trioxocarbonate. It is actually soluble in water. It's, 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 it is responsible for hardness of water. So to remove it from the water, you actually have to react it with calcium. When you react with calcium the cal or you heat up the water, either you heat up the water or you react it with other components, uh, and then the, the hardness of the water would go away. Some of these particular um, um, substances do not have complete reactions, especially when we are reacting them with acids. For adventure, you have some uh, reaction as um, calcium. All right, when you react triazocarbonates with um, dilute acids, maybe a triazocarbonate like um, calcium triazocarbonate. If you react with the dilute acid, as uh, probably HCl, you would not have a balanced equation. You will have something, um, an acid salt oftentimes is produced, uh, something like um, CAHCl plus um, carbon dioxide. Some, sometimes we have structures like this come to free, come to be, because of their reactions with uh, this particular structure. Um, yeah, is a basic salt rather, not acidic. So basic salt, Cl. This kind of incidences happen within them because of their nature, and this some of these compounds that they do produce can be uh, soluble in water, but they themselves in their own natural state, they are insoluble in water. Um, another thing about trioxocarbonates, of course, when you heat them, especially the ones that are of the very high elements, that is elements like zinc, zinc trioxocarbonates, when you heat it, it decomposes and you have zinc oxide and carbon four oxide, and that's how trioxocarbonates do behave in nature. When we talk about hydrogen trioxocarbonates, it's they are talk, we're talking about the salts of trioxocarbonates, which still contain the hydrogen notation in them. They still have the hydrogen notation in them, and these particular salts they come with general expression CH three minus. Yes, minus. They come with this general expression, and instead of them coming with the CO3 2 minus, they come with the HCO minus. These particular substances, when you react them with acids, they still go ahead to produce for you um, salt, um, um, etc. They salt water and then liberate the carbon four oxide, that's gas. So that is the nature of the hydrogen trioxocarbonate. They are acidic salts. They are salts, but they are acidic salts. Let's talk about the carbon circle. Whenever we hear the name circle, it means that it is in a loop. It starts from one point, it goes through different phases, but it always comes back to that very point it started from. So that is the nature of life. That is how it runs in life. Well, carbon is being taken into the, it's been taken out of the atmosphere and being injected into the atmosphere in different forms and at different levels. Um, I have an expression here which is showing um, two different things. I put in the sign that it is reversible. One of it is the decomposition. Sorry, this shouldn't be six here. This should be two. Let me balance this equation.
Yes, it's balanced now. One of this, the up one, is the forward reaction. Uh, whichever one you choose to call forward is forward. Whichever one you choose to call backward is backward. But one of them is you injecting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere because we can see from air, air carbon dioxide is being produced. That is, it has been injected into the atmosphere. The other one is you taking away carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Now, we as human beings, we feed on plants and we eat sugar. And this is a, the representation of sugar. That's sugar or carbohydrates. Now, this carbohydrate or sugar which we have consumed, we need oxygen to digest it. And uh, on digesting it, we are able to exert energy where, of course, water is produced and carbon dioxide which we breathe out of us is also produced. But then we also know that animals plant, and plants, rather, they also require carbon dioxide to produce their food. So they take the carbon dioxide, that's the reverse equation now, they take the carbon dioxide, mix it with water and some energy from the sun, and then they use it in the production of the food substance. And in the process, they liberate some oxygen back into the atmosphere. So you see, it is even the relationship between man and plant is symbolic. It is a give and a take reaction. We give it, we collect food from them, we take it in, and then we return to them the carbon dioxide that they need to manufacture their own food. Okay, so that is what the carbon circle is about. That is how carbon circle moves. On the screen about now is a bigger picture of the full carbon circle will be displayed. This part that we just discussed is a very minor, minute part of the whole thing. In this new one you're seeing, you're seeing that um, the carbonaceous substances, uh, that's um, removal of um, extraction of pro petroleum produce. We see also shells, fossils, and how everything moves. Okay. Carbon dioxide is being taken out of the atmosphere via respiration, but it's being injected back into the atmosphere. It's being taken out of the atmosphere, rather, via photosynthesis, but it's being put back into the atmosphere via respiration. And if you look, you take a good look at the diagram, it shows more idea on what it's about. Of course, the human activities that have been engaged in the production of fuels, burning of fuels constantly, does also increase the rate at which this reaction occur and the direction in which they occur the most. In this lesson, talking about carbon and its compounds, we have looked at the allotropes of carbon where we discussed graphite and diamond. We looked at their differences, the similarities. We also talked about the general properties of carbon, carbon as an, a group four element. We also talked about carbon four oxide, the gas that has a refreshing feeling, that gives a refreshing feeling. We talked about carbon, the carbon two oxide, the gas that has a choking feeling, a choking smell. We talked about trioxocarbonates. And those are four um, travel carbon fours. Those are salts generally, most of which are insoluble in water. We talked about the hydrogen trioxocarbonates, which are acidic salts, which actually can react with base um, to as uh, like other acids. They can react with base to produce salt water and liberate the uh, carbon four oxide gas. And then we considered briefly the carbon circle. There's a really interrelationship inter between man and the environment, how the carbon is being converted from one form of carbon to another in the environment. All right, we've spoken about a lot of things today, and in a few seconds, some questions will be displayed on your screen to test your understanding of what has been taught in this lesson. Please do well by answering them. And if there is any question that might arise in your art, you can do, do yourself a good by watching the video another time. Really, I believe strongly that the answers to the, those questions are already there. Thank you for your time.